We said logic was all about studying forms or structures of arguments that are such that if the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. But what kind of structure could guarantee something like that? In this video, I'll explain logical connectives. First, let me explain to you why it is that we have to have structure. Now, this is an argument that's found in our book, and I think it's gonna be really good practice on uh, examining logical arguments. So we're gonna work through it just a little bit. Our first step is going to be to remember what our definition of valid is. Our definition of valid is that it's the structure of the argument that guarantees that it's NTP, that makes it the case that the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. Because we saw that there were other ways to be NTP, right? But we're defining this word valid just to refer to the cases that we want to talk about, the cases where it's the structure that makes them NTP. And by the way, if you ever hear somebody say, true by definition, this is kind of the move that they're talking about. It sounds really pompous when you first hear it, right? Like, I define it to be true. That's not what they're saying. What they're saying is, I'm just talking about this specific space right here. Remember, that's the way, remember I said a technical definition. Remember that term? Technical definition, specific criteria that explain how I'm using this term in this context. And I'm just, I'm just telling you that this is what I'm talking about. That's all I'm saying. So you're not actually trying to say that I proved something by just defining it to be true. What you're saying is, this is how we're using this term. These are the things that I'm referring to. So that's step one, is to make sure that we know exactly what it is that we're talking about. We haven't really done anything crazy just yet. Step two, we're gonna pretend that propositions don't have a structure. Now I know what you might be thinking, didn't you just tell me that propositions do have structure? Yes, but for this argument, what we're gonna do is pretend like they don't, and we'll show that it has some absurd conclusion, and therefore, we must believe that they do have structure, right? So it's kind of a strategy that we're using here. Now you may have thought, but don't all sentences have structures, right? They have words that are in some kind of syntax. Yes, but remember, propositions are distinct from sentences. You could use two totally different sentences, two sentences that are structured in totally different ways and they express the same proposition. Well, that must mean that the proposition doesn't share their structure. So for the sake of our argument, we'll picture these propositions as just featureless dots, right? Uh, it's gonna be hard to do so because even dots have some kind of features like circle or colors or something like that. In fact, I'll, I'll put different colors when I'm gonna show you this thing in a second, uh, just so we can kind of see that they're different, but uh, pretend like they don't have any kind of color, pretend like they don't have any kind of shape. Uh, imagining that they are structureless, that they have no features like this, uh, we list out a bunch of propositions. Now, what kind of conclusion can we come to from this? Well, if they have no kind of structure, then we really don't have anything that we can relate them to, right? Or relate them with, I should say. Uh, you may think, but could you just combine them, right? Couldn't you just put them all together or something? But remember, if a proposition has no structure, then putting them all together doesn't make some kind of new proposition. So really all that does is list those premises all over again, right? It just says the same thing a second time. So the only conclusion we can get from something like this, if there are no structure, if there is no structure to uh, propositions, then the only conclusion that we can get was already in our premises. It was just saying one of the premises over again. And that's not very interesting. So if we are going to have some kind of interesting results, we're gonna to have to have some kind of structure to our propositions. Now, luckily, it does seem to be the case that propositions have a structure. How exactly are they structured? Well, consider two different propositions here. Surfboards are safe and skateboards are scary. Now, by the way, first one is not true. Uh, I, I fell on my surfboard fin once and I got 11 staples. I hit my back, it was, Disgust. It looked like I had been fillet. You ever see like the ads in the newspaper where the ham is cut open? That's what it looked like. It was disgust. At the ER, they asked me if I was in a knife fight. I'm in like board shorts and sand in my hair. Like, yeah, I'm in a knife fight. But uh, why am I talking about that? But that's a false proposition, right? Surfboards are not safe. They're fun. They're not safe. Uh, so imagine I put these two propositions together. Surfboards are safe and skateboards are scary. Now, Notice that this is a new proposition. This is a new claim about reality. 
Don't believe me? You might think that I'm just relisting them out again. But remember I said that that first proposition was false. And the second proposition, I, well, let's just say that it's true. I'm not saying that it's true. For the sake of our argument, we'll say that it's true. Now notice, if the first one is false and the second one is true, I put them together in this new proposition and the whole proposition all of a sudden becomes false. Even though the skateboards are scary is still true, the whole thing is false. So only propositions can be true or false. Only propositions or claims about reality. This is a new proposition we have here. We'll call these kinds of new propositions compound propositions. Compound propositions are built out of simpler propositions plus connectives. We use that connective just now, and. But there are others. But for right now, all you really need to know is they're not propositions, but they connect to propositions to form new propositions. We'll call basic propositions propositions that don't have other propositions as their parts. Notice I'm not saying that they don't have any parts. I'm just saying they don't have other propositions as their parts. Those are basic propositions. Notice that the truth of proposition three, surfboards are safe and skateboards are scary, totally depends on the truth of propositions one and two. If proposition one is false, or if proposition two is false, or if they're both false, then proposition three is gonna be false. If both one and two are true, then three will be true. So that connective and has put them together in such a way that the truth of the new proposition is totally a function of the truth values of the component propositions, the basic propositions that make it up. We'll call this a truth functional connective because there are other kinds of connectives. Now, how does such a structure make an argument? I mean, the whole point was we wanted to get some kind of conclusion out of our premises, right? Well, I'm gonna give you an example that is so obvious that it's almost ridiculous. Nobody would actually use it, but it's kind of like using one plus one equals two to explain what addition is. Well, let's take as our premise, surfboards are safe and skateboards are scary. Well, remember that word and in there. We said it was a truth functional connective. What we meant by that was that that compound proposition that's made up from that connective and its component propositions, the truth value of that is totally dependent on the component propositions. So we said in this case, that compound proposition is true if and only if both of its component propositions are also true. And it's false if one of those propositions are false. Well, in our argument, we're claiming that this is a true proposition. We're saying surfboards are safe and skateboards are scary. Well, we can get from that the conclusion that surfboards are safe. Because remember, that's what that word and does. It says if this is a true proposition, then both of these two components are true. That is what truth functional connectives do. And that's why we would care about them. They relate propositions in such a way that we can know about the truth value of some of them based on the truth value of others of them. We knew the truth value of surfboards are safe and skateboards are scary. So now all of a sudden, because we know that there's that truth functional connective in there, we know that both components must also be true. Surfboards are safe must also be true. And really that was the whole point of logic, to figure out what propositions must be true based on other propositions being true. Now, let's look at what kind of connectives there are. For next time, please read section 1.6.1, negation.